So um, I suppose I should have let you talk a little bit longer because now I'm still waiting for the live stream, but that's okay. And now we're live as every live stream here starts. All right, if you could please stand and praise God with us. If you are not able to stand, though, please sit and praise God with us.
decided to make us something to you. Father, I pray that you would be with our service today. I praise you for the opportunity to baptize people in the faith. I praise you and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I am more excited than I can possibly express without sounding corny this morning. 
I have a whole barrage of bizarre life experiences. I could tell you about them sometime. For a long time, probably, because I have the gift of gab. However, I am so overjoyed, and I don't know what has taken me this long, but I have the opportunity to baptize people this morning. This is something I've never done, and I could not be happier, and something feels so right about this. Not that it's taken me so long to baptize another human being, because that's actually in the Great Commission. Anyway, for all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed clothed yourselves with Christ. So I have, like I've, I've already said this, and I, I don't mean to keep repeating the same things, but I do that. I have such, uh, such a wonderful opportunity that I get to baptize someone I've literally known their entire life today. I get to baptize two people that I've known since they were itty bitty children, which they're not anymore. And I know that because one of them is here with their husband, so I know they're not little kids anymore. In the Great Commission, which is Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. All of the people that are being baptized this morning have also opted to be baptized into membership at Valley View Mennonite Church. So our congregation has changed again for the better. We have three, well, by the end of this service today, we will have three new members that will have to decide what is the direction our church is going in to help shape our decisions, to vote for elders and eventually pastors whenever that happens again. I love that sound. Don't. (laughs) If you have a child here and they start crying, don't apologize. Don't be embarrassed. Just know that we're so happy to hear that sound. I didn't hear that sound for almost a year. It is one of the most gorgeous sounds on earth as a child crying in church. Let it let it go. We're happy. We are blessed and overjoyed. It's good. There are so many things in scripture to be said about baptism, and I think we should talk about each and every one of them over the course of the rest of our lives together. But I learned this week that there are, depending on your translation, about 101 references to baptism in the Bible. That is a significant topic in scripture, and almost never does it mention baptizing aside from for repentance and forgiveness of sins. Baptism is a huge deal that we don't always make much of. And I stand up here as someone who's lived 39 years, majorly as a Christian, But I'm a little bit upset with myself that I have never actually baptized another human being before because at no point in the Great Commission does it say, become a pastor and baptize everyone in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
I'm happy to do it, please. I want to keep baptizing people, so please come to me. But I'm just saying, as the Ethiopian eunuch said, here's water, what is to prevent me from being baptized? It is in scripture, it is actually commanded that we be baptized. In Acts 3, or is it Acts 2? Acts 2.38, I believe. But I'm going to go back a few verses so that it, it has context. So this is at Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit has fallen on people, and Peter addresses the crowd. Brothers, I'm at verse 29. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and in his tomb, his tomb is here to this day, but he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an, on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ that was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we all witness, we are all witnesses of the fact, exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the, promise, the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven. For your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. This is one of the few promises in Scripture, one of the few commandments in Scripture that even includes us and all those who are far off. We're about 2,000 years I would like to share with you, um, as part of our baptism and membership class, we went through the uh, Confession of Faith in a Mennonite Perspective. Article 11 is on baptism, and I would like to share a couple paragraphs out of that. Um, as the baptism and membership class will attest to, there are days when my dyslexia seems a bigger hurdle than others. Today is wonderfully one of those days. So this is more or less what it says. I'm joking. I'll say it. It just may take me a few minutes. We believe that the baptism of believers with water is a sign of cleansing from sin. Baptism is also a pledge before the church of their covenant with God to walk in the way of Jesus Christ through the power of his Holy Spirit. Believers are baptized into Christ and his body by the Spirit, water, and blood. Baptism is a testimony to God's gift of the Holy Spirit and the continuing work of the Spirit in the lives of believers. Through the Spirit, we repent and turn towards God in faith. The baptism of the Holy Spirit enables believers to walk in newness of life. To live in community with Christ and the church. To offer Christ's healing and forgiveness to those in need. To witness boldly to the good news of Christ. And to hope in the sharing of Christ's future glory. Baptism by water is a sign that the person has repented, received forgiveness, renounced evil, and died to sin through the grace of God in Christ Jesus. Thus cleansed, believers are incorporated into Christ's body on earth, the church. Baptism by water is also a pledge to serve Christ and to minister as a member of his body according to the gifts given each one. 
Jesus himself requested water baptism at the beginning of his ministry and sent his followers to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Baptism is done in obedience with Jesus' command and as a public commitment to identify with Jesus Christ, not only in his baptism by water, but in his life in the Spirit and in his death and in suffering love. Life even to death. Jesus understood the giving of his life through the shedding of his blood for others as baptism. He also spoke about the disciples' suffering and death as baptism. Those who accept water baptism commit themselves to follow Jesus in giving their lives for others, in loving their enemies, and in renouncing violence even when it means their own suffering or death. Christian baptism is for those who confess their sins repent, accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, and commit themselves to follow Christ in obedience as members of his body, both giving and receiving care and counsel in the church. Baptism is for those who are of age accountability and who freely request baptism on the basis of their response to Jesus Christ in faith. actually like to invite our baptism and membership class to the front. Uh, we've got Wesley Kurlowicz and Mike, if you want to come up with Wes. Dylan Wanker. David, are you coming up with Dylan? And Kay Ann Peterson. Noah, come on up, buddy. I didn't really remember the whole sound issue, but I got a pocket here. Maybe that'll work. That'll look fun in the video. I am absolutely elated that I get to baptize these young folks today. I've known West. I know the hospital was serving liver and onions that day. It was important. I've watched you grow into a, a fairly godly young man, and I couldn't be more proud of you. I'm so excited you're up here. Dylan, aside from your love of serpents, you have the best heart of maybe any person I've ever met. And I'm not saying you're wrong for that, I just don't understand. <laughs> Kay Ann, you are the funniest little girl I ever had in a Sunday school class or VBS or anything. I just. And I'm so excited. And I got to do you two's wedding last year. I'm just uh, going to be a wreck in a second here. But So in part of committing to be baptized, they are committing to three things, which I'm going to ask them. And they're going to respond, we've decided, with yes. course. All right. So you three, do you know that you are God's child through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior? Is it your earnest desire to follow Christ in death to self and to walk with him in newness of life? Do you hereby renounce, repudiate, and reject the kingdom of darkness, Satan, and all his works with all his pomp and pride? Okay.
Wesley Kurlowich, I baptize you upon confession of faith in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take my hand, rise in a newness of faith. <laughs> Dylan Wanker, upon confession of faith in Jesus Christ and obedience to baptism, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take my hand. Rise in the newness of faith. <laughs> you ready, kiddo? All right. K.M. Peterson. Upon confession of faith in Jesus Christ, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Take my hand. <laughs> in the newness of faith. <laughs> so the water wasn't as cold as I had promised then, but you wouldn't know it. Now there's a part for all of us, if you would open the blue hymnal to 777, because each of these three are being baptized also into membership. If you're able to without pain, would you stand with me? 777. What we are doing is we're pledging to them to receive them into the fellowship of the church as members with us. All right. As we now receive you into the fellowship of the church, we make this covenant with you as we renew our own covenant with God to assist each other, to assist in times of need, to share our gifts and possessions, to forgive as Christ has forgiven us, to support each other in joy and sorrow, and in all things to work for the common good, thus making known Christ's presence among us to the glory of God. As we unite with each other now, may you Christ our Lord. So I am going to give them an opportunity to speak. You may be seated, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to give them the opportunity to speak or give testimony. And if your beloved uh, mentors and husband mentor person would like to feel more awkward, I'll just leave you right here. Um, I'm going to give them an opportunity to speak. Well, since they're probably not going to because they already chickened out earlier. I'm going to talk for an hour. No, I'm just kidding. Y'all know I like to talk, so this is easy for me. Um, pretty much born and raised in this church. I'm going to get emotional. Um, I always felt like I wanted to be baptized. And after watching my two cousins get baptized, It kind of made me feel like maybe baptism wasn't for me. Maybe I need to think about this a little longer. And as Luke read, you get to an age of accountability. And I felt a few years ago that I was ready to be baptized. I was accountable. I had taken on a lot of other responsibilities in my life and felt that I could be accountable to be baptized. Well, some things happened, and I decided I'm not ready yet. Well, then last year, not being able to come to church was one of the worst things 
ever, I guess. <laughs> um, when we came a few times last fall, I, I felt like I was home. <laughs> and so when Luke announced that he was going to be doing baptism classes, I just felt like this voice telling me, you're ready, it's your time. Time for you to get this done. And it got to the point in my life where, like, Luke almost, I had to not sing this morning because Luke paid, played one of my favorite songs above all. And it got to the point where I had listened to the songs on the radio or Pandora or whatever. And, like, Stephen Curtis Chapman or Casting Crowns, pretty much all of their songs don't make me cry anymore. And this morning, Casting Crowns was playing one of their songs. It's one of their newer ones, so I don't really know it yet. But it's just like, yeah, I'm doing the right thing. And I'm a lot older than these, well, not a lot older, but I'm older than these guys, but I could see in both of them just from even this morning us chatting and stuff that they're ready to. They're a little shyer about public speaking, but um, I am, like I said, just overjoyed. Um, and I was actually worried I might accidentally harass Wesley into being baptized, so I had to back off for a couple weeks because I kept sending him jokes and memes about how he needed to be baptized. And I didn't want him to stand up here and be like, well, Luke made me. But after I finally left him alone for a couple weeks, I got a text saying that he wanted to be baptized. And uh, Dylan, as an answer to his grandmother's prayers, decided it was time to be baptized as well. <laughs> but um, this is one of the most important things I've ever done, and I know it lacked a certain amount of polish and proper ceremony. But as I'll tell you at every moment, I'm new. I'm new. And nowhere in the Great Commission does it say an outline of how we're supposed to baptize anyone. But we are to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I am really excited that all three of these individuals in front of you, we have accepted into membership in this church. We have church members to help us minister, to put in places where they can be used, hopefully not to overwork them, but I'm just overjoyed. Will you pray with me? Father God, I thank you for these people. I thank you for the people that are standing behind them as well, that have helped them to get through this journey to this point, Lord. I pray that we would take seriously our own confessions of faith and that we would help to support one another, Lord. I pray that we would be able to all walk in a newness of faith after you. Father God, I pray that to you would be all glory and all praise. Father, again, I thank you for these individuals and for the meaning that they have to me for how much they mean to this congregation, Lord. Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can sit down if you want to. Make sure you hug them for a really long time after. I was going to try not to embarrass Noah. He isn't really fond of being in front of everyone. However, he is wearing closed-toed shoes. If you've never been baptized, I've said this a hundred times, and I'll say it 200 more unless I die first. If you haven't been baptized, please be baptized. If you don't want to be baptized into membership, 
I care, but not that much. I want to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because as far as I can tell from Scripture, that's part of what God commanded me to do. So if you want to be baptized and then go to a different church later, I still want you to be baptized. I know I just prayed, but would you stand with me if you can without pain? I'd like to pray again. Father God, I thank you for the gift of your scriptures. I thank you for these 66 books of your oracles that we struggle to understand. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps to guide us and make decisions. Father God, I thank you for Jesus who allows us to be reconciled to you. Father God, I thank you for this congregation and for our friends and visitors. I thank you for our ability to follow you in relationship with you, Lord. I pray that you would help us as we try to gather others to ourselves and to you, Lord, and that to you would be the glory, not to us. I pray that your purpose would His name. Amen. <sighs> so that actually brings us to our time of announcements, prayer, and sharing, which will be led by Mike Catalfew. And you may have noticed from that little jar, at some point we also have a birthday offering for this month, which we could do right now. So for the month of, what month are we in? May. If you had a birthday in the month of May. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear scholars. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Take the gift of salvation. said that my son-in-law, Luke here, is about as organized as a box of cornflakes. <laughs> <laughs> I make mistakes too. It's true. it's true. I see in the bulletin it has the uh, fundraiser auction as June question mark. It's going to be June 11th and it'll be over at our auction house. If you have donations that you want to give and you want me to share them on Facebook, you can either send me a picture or tell me about it and I'll take a picture or whatever. Uh, also, I put a few of the flyers for the gospel concert on the table out front here. If you have a workplace or something, you want to hang one of them, just feel free to grab one. Uh, the concert... singers because we had money left from last year so I said why not get another another group but uh, and also the auction's going to start at four o'clock over at our auction house over there we'll have there'll be some food I don't know what yet but you'll be able to get maybe a sloppy joe or something I don't know uh, but it's on the 11th of July at four o'clock in the afternoon I'll 
11th of June, I'm sorry, 11th of June. Good I brought, thing I brought my wife along. Uh, <laughs> she keeps telling me what's going on. You can uh, just hand her the mic, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> 11th of June at 4 o'clock is the auction, so uh, we appreciate whatever you guys want to do. I've already collected a few things as far as gift certificates, so uh, hopefully we can have Microphone. <laughs> Don't forget sewing this week on Thursday. Thank you very much. You want the microphone so you can say that again? <laughs> <laughs> you got to understand, I'm pretty close as deaf as you can get. I have hearing aids, but they help very little. That's why I keep them on my dressers. I don't want to lose them. <laughs> Any other announcements? Um, we have speakers in the um, kitchen now, so if somebody wants to learn how those work, I can show you how those Probably next week we'll have that working. Are we still having problems with the internet? Definite maybe. Yeah, off and on. It's, it's working better today. Probably time for another phone call. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Any other announcements? Anything you'd like to share? Any prayer requests? I'd like to ask for a prayer for Ann Louise Wagner's family. Um, her sister, Marion Drake, is in St. Vincent Hospital. She has cancer. Um, they were moving her to the cancer ward the last I knew, and they're talking about surgery and chemo for her. So just keep Marion in your prayers, because she is, uh, in Ann Louise's words, terrified. <laughs> um, and just keep Ann Louise and Marion's son, David, in your prayers, because they're basically the people that have been trying to take care of things while Marion's in the hospital. So just keep them all in your prayers and just pray for us. It's, it seems like every time we think that we're on a roll with the stuff with the house, we meet a roadblock somewhere. And I'm about ready to blow a gasket. So <laughs> just <laughs> keep us all in your prayers about that issue. Um, la I have like a praise and then also continue prayer. Uh, last Sunday I got to watch one of my best friends marry her best friend. And a but it was just a really great moment to spend time with her because because of COVID and stuff and her living in Erie, we don't get to see each other very often. But it was really great to get a little, get to see her and her family and some of our friends from high school and just get to spend a bunch of time together and be silly and kind of be like the old days in high school. Um, but just continue to pray for Jocelyn and Omar and their baby uh, that will be coming August 3rd unless he decides to come a little earlier. Um, but please just keep praying for them. Uh, I know Jocelyn's really struggling with the idea of wanting to be able to get a job this fall because she just finished her teaching degree. But with all the surgeries that the baby's going to have to have and everything, she's kind of nervous about getting a job and then having to take time. Um, but that it was it was so great just to see it was such a great ceremony centered on God and 
I don't know, just watching, watching him, watching her was just, I guess, amazing to be able to actually go to a wedding and be in person and see all that. Um, and also, I wanted to, uh, I guess, give praise for, I guess, patience because we had a horse show last Sunday also and it was very hot. And there were some people there I was not ready to face. And with God's will, I was civil with that person. I got a couple. Um, yesterday, the prayer chain had went around for my mom's mother-in-law, um, Rose, that she had fell. And this morning, mom sent me a text saying that Rose had surgery this morning, and they ended up giving her two units of blood in surgery, and she's possibly going to have to have more blood because um, she's anemic. And then this week, Vicki Gilkinson went to her doctor to get her last tube that she had in her out, and they did it. The doctor said she's healed up wonderful. Um, so she doesn't have to go back till August 4th, and hopefully two weeks after that, she'll be able to have her last surgery. I can't wait to go back this week to see her in the barn. It's been hard not having her in there. Um, DC, and I got a personal phone call from John Hillegas. He's leaving MCC now. Um, he's going to Illinois to be a chief of a meat canning, a home canning operation there. Um, and so pray for MCC as they find a new uh, meat can coordinator because this just it's was just all of a sudden he just told him last week and um, I was actually on the phone call when he told MCC and all of us so pray for them that they will find a couple more canner boys he said they have two they need two more and um, that they can find an MCC meat can coordinator so that they can have meat canning Please lift him up in prayer. He has uh, been suffering a great deal. Um, he ended up in the emergency uh, room at uh, Cleveland Clinic on Tuesday morning early and thought that perhaps some of his hardware had come apart that they had put in his back, and that's not the case. The doctor's telling him that he should never have gone back to work. Well, the doctor signed off, and the insurance company stops paying. You go back to work. So now he's off work um, in extreme pain, and uh, we don't know for how long, but um, pray for, for the rest of the stuff that should have healed to heal. Thanks. Um, at the moment, uh, I got a text from Glenn yesterday, Glenn Smith, Brother Glenn Smith, church singer Glenn, however you refer to him. Uh, he's in the hospital. He's uh, needed a blood transfusion yesterday, and they're still trying to figure out what's wrong with him. But um, if you just pray that he would uh, get some answers and that the doctors would know how to fix him, that would be wonderful because this is about six months in now, I believe, with very little to no answers. Anything else you'd like to share? I'd also like to ask prayer for my sister. I believe her lungs are filling with fluid again. Give me the microphone. 
a prayer request for myself. I have cancer, and it's, I'm hoping that it's pretty well healed. I have it in my liver and in my pancreas. So I'm just hoping that God heals me of all this. Thank you. Any other requests? Luke, you come forward and meet us over there. Just so I can write it clearly in my notes, uh, will you tell me your name? Yes, ma'am. Helen. Helen. Thank you so much. I just want to actually write it down so that I don't just keep referring to you as my sister with cancer. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you're able to without pain, would you please stand with me? Father God, we thank you so much that you want to hear our concerns. And that you've called us your friends and your children. Father God, I pray that you would be with Anne Louise Wagner and her sister. And her sister's son as she's battling with cancer, Lord. I pray that you would give her doctors wisdom. I pray that you would calm her fears. Father God, you are the great healer. I pray that you would heal her. Whatever that looks like to you, Lord. Father God, I praise you for Kay and having patience this weekend, this last weekend. And I thank you for Kay Ann's friend's wedding, Lord. And I pray for the health of their baby, Omar Jr. Father God, I pray that you would draw them so close as a family. I pray that they would follow you. That they would grow closer to each other and closer to you, Lord. I pray for Brenda's mother-in-law, Rose. I pray that you would continue to heal her, Lord. I pray that you would give the doctors wisdom as well. Father God, I thank you for the healing that Vicki Gilkinson has experienced, Lord, and I pray that you would continue to touch her and continue to restore her health. Father, I pray for John Hillegas and his new endeavor. Father, I pray that you would place the right people at MCC. I pray that you would use that ministry, that it would continue to grow, and that it would continue to flourish, and that you would place the right people. I also pray for whatever John is doing next, that you would bless it, Lord. Father, I pray that you would continue to be with the Bolorats family, particularly Blaine, as he's laid up, Lord. I pray that you would restore his health, that you would give him healing, and that he would be able to return to work when it's your time, Lord. I pray for Glenn and his doctors this morning as they're trying to figure out what's wrong with him. Father God, I pray that you would provide the answers and that you would heal him, whether by your divine, by your divine ways, Lord, or through doctors. Father, I pray that you would be with Cookie. I pray that you would restore the health of her lungs. I pray that you would help her to know how to proceed. I pray that you would give her the right doctors with the right answers. Father, I thank you for Helen Stutzman. I thank you that she was willing to share. Father God, I pray that you would touch her body and give her healing, Lord. I thank you for the healing that has taken place, Lord. I pray that you would restore her completely. health and in a newness and a restoring of health, Lord. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for all these people here, for those that weren't able to make it. I thank you for the congregation that you've placed me in. Father, I pray that your will would be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.
the ushers come forward, we'll take the morning offering. Let's pray. Father God, I ask that you give us the wisdom to accept this that we have donated here today, to guide us, to lead us, that this congregation becomes stronger, that we may become more open. Whatever, please let us know what we can do. We ask that you strengthen us and use these monies and give us the wisdom to correct us if we are wrong. We ask these things in your beloved son's name. Amen. That brings us to our time of congregational hymns, which will be led by Judy Catalfew. You can stand up as well. It makes you sing better. It makes everyone sing better. That wasn't a cut. Um.
I'd like to remind you there is lunch in the fellowship hall and I invite you to stay. Father God, again, I thank you for the opportunity to serve you in this way with these people. Father God, I thank you for those who were willing to commit to baptism and membership. I thank you for the rest of the congregation and our visitors as well, Lord. I pray that as we go out from here, that we would shine for you, that we would shine unmistakably as people who know Jesus Christ. I pray that you would bless our meal and our time of fellowship and that we would lift your name higher, Lord. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. All together, amen. Peace, shalom.